Hi, my name is Clinical Planus and you're watching the video My Senior Gravis Clinical Investigation. In this video, we'll be focusing specifically on tests performed on patients with My Senior Gravis and not so much on the routine of optic examination that would occur for any patient that came into a clinic with an eye movement disorder. So, for instance, obviously, a patient who might come in with a ptosis and diplopia will need to have a cover test, ocular movements assessed, may need a HES chart, etc. What I'll be focusing on in this video are the supplementary tests that are specifically employed in patients who are suspected of having myasthenia gravis that assist you to make that diagnosis. These tests also complement the array of other clinical findings that you have during your clinical assessment of the patient. Let's start off with the Tensilon test. The Tensilon test is a gold standard investigation performed in a patient who is suspected of having Mycenia gravis. What you're doing is essentially injecting Tensilon, which is a short acting anticholinesterase. It's injected intravenously, and what can happen is that you can see improvement in the muscle function of your patient through uh, intravenously injecting this Tensilon. Now, the only issue is that not all patients actually respond to Tensilon. So a negative result or a patient who doesn't improve with Tensilon does not necessarily indicate that the patient does not have myasthenia gravis. You can also have false positives. It's rare, but that is possible as well. So again, the clinical outcomes of the Tensilon test are utilised in combination with the clinical investigation of the patient or the overall examination. In terms of the process for the Tensilon test, generally 10 milligrams of Tensilon is utilised, but we commence with 2 milligrams and the patient is observed thereafter. And the patient's observed for any improvement and also for side effects to uh, Tensilon. Should the patient tolerate the 2 milligrams well, then uh, the next 8 milligrams can be given. It can be given as a single dose or it can again be given in 2 milligram um, doses. Generally speaking, uh, Tensilon will be effective within one minute and can last for about five minutes. So it's during this period that you can assess your patient. Now, if the patient responds to the anticholinesterase, what you will see is an improvement in the muscle function. So you can do a variety of tests. You can look at the ocular movements or you can observe the ptosis depending on what's present initially. You can perform a HES chart. So if you perform the HES chart beforehand and then uh, look at the HES chart again post Tensilon, you can compare the ocular movements more objectively. You could do an EMG and have a look at the action potentials of the extraocular muscles. You can even assess IOP. Uh, when a patient responds to Tensilon, there is actually an increased muscle tone of the extraocular muscles. And this actually leads to a significant increase in IOP. And you can expect an increase of about 5 millimetres of mercury. Okay, here we have an example of a patient who has had a HES chart performed prior to uh, Tensilon. So we can see that um, on the outer field, there appears to be a superior oblique underaction as well as on the inner field here. So this patient may be concluded as having a superior oblique palsy. Post Tensilon, this is what the patient looks like. And you can see that there's a significant improvement here and very little superior oblique underaction in this particular instance now. A superior oblique palsy does not behave in this way uh, in response to Tensilon, so this is proof that you have a pseudo uh, superior oblique palsy and that myasthenia gravis is the cause of the underaction or the limited eye movements noted. Next we have the ice pack test, which is far less invasive than the um, Tensilon test and can be primarily used in patients with atosis. And over here we can see that uh, the patient has a bilateral ptosis and an ice pack is added um, to either eye. And you can apply this for around 3 to 15 minutes. It depends on how much time you have. Uh, but the longer you have, the longer you're resting the eyes and cooling them down. Now the principle is that if mycenia gravis is causing the ptosis, then uh, by resting the eyes and cooling them down, what will happen is an improvement in the ptosis. And what we see is post uh, the ice pack test, 
here we can see there is an improvement in the ptosis. And you can objectively measure that uh, ptosis uh, post ice pack and then pre ice pack and you can record that in your notes. An alternative to the ice pack test is to simply ask the patient to close their eyes for a long period of time, something like 30 minutes if they go into the waiting area, close their eyes and stay there for 30 minutes without opening their eyes, then you can bring them back in and see whether there's an improvement in the ptosis after that rest. Similarly, with the sleep test, if your patient has a sleep for about a half an hour uh, to an hour, you should see improvements in the patient's symptom po symptoms post-sleep. This is a little bit more difficult to administer clinically. Uh, you usually don't have a bed for a patient to have a nap in, uh, so uh, generally not performed in, in clinic, and it's probably easier just to perform an ice pack test. Some clinics even have ice packs available um, in the fridge at all times. Conversely to trying to improve the symptoms through either the Tensilon test, ice pack test, or um, resting the eyes, we can actually try and fatigue the patient and see if it worsens or the symptoms worsen with fatigue. So we can look at eyelid fatigability, and in this instance, you can ask your patient not to blink whilst maintaining prime position gaze. And usually what you'll see is as the patient tries not to blink, the lids just slowly start to droop further and further. You can ask them to do sustained up gaze. So get your patient to look up and hold up gaze as long as possible. And again, what you'll see is the ptosis will start to get worse and worse with time. This again relates to that levator weakness that we spoke of in the previous video. You can also look for that enhanced ptosis sign. So uh, hold the eyelid up of the one eye and what you may see is an increase in the ptosis of the less affected side. Okay, so so far we've talked about trying to look for improvements of uh, muscle function or try and look for worsening of mus muscle function with fatigability. The other thing we can do is actually test for myxenia gravis or look for systemic investigations to support that myxenia gravis is uh, the diagnosis. So one, you can do pathology testing, in which case you're looking for the antibodies related to myxenia gravis. As you would have seen in the earlier YouTube videos, um, not all patients will have um, these antibodies on pathology testing. So the absence of antibodies does not exclude mycenia gravis. You could also perform electromyography, where you actually look at the electrical activity of the muscles. You can do this actually for the extraocular muscles. And uh, the issue with this, however, is that some patients with mild mycenia gravis may not give you a positive result. However, uh, single muscle fibre electromyographies have been shown to be quite sensitive to picking up patients with mycenia gravis, but you need experienced hands um, to perform this particular investigation. And finally, radiology uh, can be performed and specifically an enlarged thymus will be uh, looked for in these particular patients. The image to the right here shows a patient with a thymoma who has myasthenia gravis. And here you can just see the thymoma there and uh, the outline of it just there as well. Okay, so in conclusion, we have a variety of clinical tests that we can perform to assist us in diagnosing a patient with mycenia gravis. In one instance, we're trying to look for improvements or worsening of the signs and symptoms that a patient presents with. So in, in doing this, we might use the Tensilon test, ice pack test, sleep test, or fatigue testing. Alternatively, we could also look for um, systemic signs of mycenia gravis, so pathology testing or radiology, or we could actually look at the electrical activity of the extraocular muscles uh, to determine if uh, there may be mycenia gravis. A reminder that for many of these tests, a negative response or a lack of responsiveness uh, to the clinical investigation sometimes does not mean that the patient does not have mycenia gravis. So again, you're going to have to look at the complete picture of your patient at all the clinical signs and symptoms to arrive at your final diagnosis. Okay, that brings us to the conclusion of this video. Thank you for watching.